Blog Talk Radio. Y'all, you are now on Robbie the Rummy. Yes, I'm finally back. Uh, I've been gone the past couple of weeks due to situations. So the last interview you heard with Delusional and the Dirty White Boys was my book, Your Mark. And then the interview before with Ace of Thug Therapy from White Music it happened to be my partner, Rain Man. So but I'm back, and I'm here to do this interview with tonight's guest, Cousin Cletus. So for the next 30 minutes or so, get ready to hear a great interview with Cousin Cletus, and we'll get on with the interview. So we're going to get him on now and just kick back and enjoy. Yo, Cousin Cletus. What's happening? Oh, what's happening, man? Shit. It's fucking cold up here in Milwaukee. Not ready for this shit yet. Yes, I hear that New York is the same way. Yeah, it's windy and miserable, but the Packers are kicking the Texans' ass tonight, so I'm good with this. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, uh, you ready to start this interview? For sure. Hey, right, so uh, you just recently got off a uh, tour recently. Do you have any more in the makings or coming up or being worked on? Um, you know, to be honest, I, uh, literally yesterday was the first time I was able to sit down and kick my feet back and not have shit to do for the first time since mid-August, like literally yesterday. So as far as like getting back out on the road immediately, not anytime real soon, um, we're talking about possibly, uh, a, uh, a cousin Cletus headline tour probably in February. But uh, as of right now, uh, immediate, immediately, I got there's nothing really coming up. You know, something might pop up, but right so, now, I'm not surprised, and except uh, just working on music. Right, right. So, you know, speaking of music, do you have a new EP in the making, or are you going to do a full length album? Or uh, the next one, the next one will be a full length album. Uh, I started working on it. Uh, months ago, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I, I, I guess that they're always a work in progress. You know, it's always I'm always working on music. I'm always writing. I'm always recording. Um, the next one is definitely going to be a full length. Uh, I'm, I've taken my time on it, and I'll continue to take my time on it. Uh, but you know, I'm hoping to have a at least a dozen tracks on there and have that out probably uh, probably by about the early, early 2013, probably February early February. So is that what the possible headlining tour is going to be basing on? Is that album or? Um, it could. They could coincide that way. Uh, coincidentally, right now, it's just kind of happening that way. Um, I, my mindset was to have it out by early 2013, and then uh, show opportunities started popping up. So they, they probably will, but as of right now, there's nothing official. Right, right. So, um, with projects and whatnot, you noted that you are in works with the album and whatnot. Do you have any side projects you've been thinking of or in the makings of, or is that like your main priority right now is to do that album? Uh, my main priority right now, is, that's my main focus, is uh, pretty much getting that album done. Um, that being priority side projects off of that. Um, you know, I always have stuff going on. I'm involved with, uh, you know, a couple of different groups, bands here in Milwaukee that I'm, you know, I mess around with. Um, so I spent a little time on that. Uh, there's other things that are starting to develop and happen that I can't talk about yet, but um, 
it's not, you know, it's not anything that's going to occupy my full time. Like, you know, right now, what I'm really focusing on is just getting, uh, working on that album, taking my time with it, uh, rather than just, you know, just putting something out, slamming it out just because it's time for one. Um, for me, you know, I think the fans deserve it. Uh, the people that have been waiting for new music from me, you know, I don't, I don't just want to shit something out and be like, here you go. You know, I'm, uh, I do want to put heart and soul into it and make it something I can be proud of to pass off to everybody else. Great, great. So with this new album, is there a type of, like, different sounds we're, you know, we're going to expect from, you know, the EP? Is it going to be the same sound? Or is it going to be changed up? Or how is that all going to come about? I, you know, I guess you'll just have to kind of wait and see. Um, I think if everybody, if anybody knows me or they've heard my EP, they know there is a different sound to it. You know, it's it's a little, it's a lot more melodic. There's a lot of singing on it. There's a lot of melodies, a lot of harmonies. Um, that's generally my style, uh, my forte. But you never know. You know, uh, music changes. It develops as we develop, uh, as we listen to different things, we're influenced by different things. It can change a little, so, I mean, you never know. Uh, some of the stuff I've recorded right now is, you know, it is a little bit different. Um, it was a little bit different than the EP, but, you know, I'm still trying to just, uh, I'm, I'm always just going to do me and stay real to me and just kind of, I always put it out there. It's just kind of like, here it is, you know, if, if you like it, if you feel it like I do, awesome. If you don't, you know, I'm sorry, maybe I'll catch you down the line with something else, but uh, I don't try to, appease anybody when it comes to music. You know, music will always just be me and, you know, what, how I feel it. And I hope, you know, that the fans can just connect to it the way I do. That's about the best I can do. Right, right. So with this album, did you plan on making it so it has, you know, a bunch of features on it, or is it going to be like the EP where the majority of it was you or... What's that all going to be about? Is it just going to be you, or is there any features we can expect? That's, that's one that I'm on the fence about still, um, and I've tossed it around a little bit, and I've had offers, I've had ideas. Um, I, I don't really, I don't want to say I don't dig collabs. Um, I mean, I do, because there's a shift when artists can come together and do that, but I don't want to do something just because it's a name and it's going to help me sell more albums or something like that. You know, if I do a call, again, the music to me is real and it always will be, you know, um, that's what I want to sell is the music. And, um, again, people connecting with me that way. So if there's collabs, it might just be, there might, I don't know, there might be one, there might be two, uh, but I'm definitely not going to chalk it up with, you know, every track has got a different person on it. Um, I really Again, just want to focus on want the focus to be on me and what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to portray. Um, I think for collabs for me down the line, if I do them, you know, I want I want them to more let the people coming to me, and then we can trade. We do one back and forth, you know, uh, bigger names, bigger artists, people that want to collab, not me going out there and trying to find somebody and just slap a name on. If that makes sense. So. All in all, will there be? I don't know. There might be one or two. You never know. Right, right. So, you've been doing music for a while and whatnot. What got you influenced into doing what you do now? Ooh. Um, well, shit, yeah, music for me goes way back, all the way to childhood. Um, I've been music that surrounded me and my family my entire life. Um... You know, obviously, you know, when I started listening to hip-hop, I mean, I was, shoot, this is uh, <laughs> late 80s, early 90s, you know, I think the first cassette I ever had was a Ghetto Boys, <coughs> excuse me, a Ghetto Boys, like, self-titled album, uh, some bootleg cassette I'd gotten off one of the neighbors, and that was the very first thing I started listening to. And <clears throat> so hip-hop's always been around them, too, and... Uh, I guess coincidentally, getting into the rap game, getting into hip hop. You know, I've been a juggalo since the mid '90s, and uh, I started working for Psychopathic in 2005, um, before Boondocks came to the label. So, you know, it was just again, that's just part of my whole story. It's just it was coincidence and how things happened. You know, I was there at the right there at the right time and uh, paid my dues with them, and 
when the opportunity came to hook up with Boondocks, of course I jumped on. So I don't right. know, you know influences is that, that's music influences for me. You know, growing up, obviously again surrounded me, but uh, you know musical influence. <laughs> Anybody that knows me or anybody that was on the tour with me knows that, you know, the late night, uh, what we call Pandora parties when I'm just sitting at my computer going through my music. It's an array of shit. It's, I have, I mean, I listen to everything. When I say everything, well, just about everything, but, I mean, it's, it's pretty extensive and I'll jump from one thing to the next. You know, music is, uh, just a, it's a huge palette for me. So, I'm influenced by everything and everything around me. And I don't know. I, I just continually, uh, Try not to be over influenced by anybody or any one person or any one style, and continually just do me. All right. So you noted that you know you do all different types of sounds with your music and whatnot. Uh, how would you, I don't know, compare your music to another artist of an influence of yours, or is yours just? You know, just your own style, you know, you do your own thing. Um, that's a tough one, too. <laughs> uh, people have asked me that quite a bit. Like, well, what would you say you're, you sound like? And I'm like, well, I honestly, I, I don't even know. You know. I don't know who I could compare it to. I'd like to think I'm creating a new sound, not just for the underground and not just for the fan base that I already have, I'd like to think I'm trying to create something new that anybody and everybody can latch on to. Um, but <clears throat> as far as I'm putting it down on one, uh, no. <laughs> it's kind of everything shuffled all together. And, you know, I, I put music on, I sit, you know, smoke a little bit, sit down, pull out the pen, start writing, and just whatever it feels to me and whatever I'm getting out of it is what comes out, you know, so... I try, again, I try not to get influenced by one or any. I'd like to continue to think I'm doing my own thing. Great. Great. So, you, uh, you know, you've been doing a lot of touring and whatnot. Um, out of every tour you've done, what would you say was your more highly anticipated tour, like your, you know, main favorite and whatnot and you know with future touring who would you say you'd like to tour with oh um well I think uh as far as tours that I was most looking forward to and most anticipated I would probably be the Toxic Terror Tour Twisted Toxic uh, Toxic Terror Tour it was I want to say 2007, maybe 2008, somewhere right there. Uh, that was the first time I ever got to step out on stage with Boondocks and, uh, as persona of Cousin Cletus as his hype man. Uh, which, obviously, you know, I, when I got that call, you know, um, this shit, a month before the tour went out, uh, originally it was the first call I got was from Jamie Madras, and he said, hey, you want to come out and be my runner? Uh, or his assistant, essentially, on tour. And I was like, fuck yeah. And then uh, two days later, I get the call from Boondocks, and he said, hey, since you're already on the album, and you already know my shit, you want to be my hype, man? And I was like, hell yeah. So that one, obviously, I was very much anticipated, and I had the most amazing time ever uh, being on stage, representing Psychopathic, you know, representing them, as opposed to being on the other side, just going to shows. So that was, uh, I don't know, that was probably the best, I mean, the most anticipated one. Uh, maybe not the one I had the most fun on, but uh, definitely anticipated. Um, and as far as who would want to go out with from here, I mean, you know, I'm still humble. Uh, I know that. I still feel like I'm young in this game, even though I've pretty much paid dues. I've established myself with, uh, I'm still humble to the guys that have been out there and have been touring and, and that do put in as much hard work as I do. So, um, you know, somebody like Prozac, you know, that guy's, to me, he's paid dues over the years. Uh, I've known him for many years. 
Uh, he's doing big things. He's doing good things. The man deserves to be headlining, you know, from coast to coast on his own, uh, you know, with Strange backing him. Something like that would be dope to get on. Um, obviously, you know, Strange Subnoise. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in the underground a while. I've, I've, I've toured with a lot of the underground guys. Uh, at this point, I think uh, I'm really trying to – I'm still humble enough that I go out and open for somebody. Uh, if I do go out and headline um, – you know, I may just keep it to openers that come with me, or I may just keep it to the local. I have no idea, you know. I'm still humble. I think if somebody came with me in an offer, I'd definitely consider it. That's about it. Okay. So, you know, you are going back to hype man and whatnot. You guys are always touring. Have you ever considered in doing a tour maybe without him, you know, doing like your own thing, or is that just going to be, you know, every tour have him come on with you and, you know, just keep doing your thing. No, no, you know, that's what I'm saying uh, that we're looking at for February. Um, just me as headlining my own, just be a cousin Cletus tour uh, without Boondocks. Uh, at this point, Boondocks is kind of sitting in the back seat. Uh, he's been, not not to me, don't get me wrong, I just mean uh, Boondocks has put Boondocks to the side. Turn, Turncoat Dirty is the one that's taken over at this point. Um, I think everybody will, has either read that or will see that. Uh, he's Turncoat Dirty is the other project persona that he's been working on. Uh, that's what he's going to be doing. I think he's got uh, Turncoat Dirty. That EP is dropping late November. He's going to have shirts and charms and all that kind of shit. So you know he's he's kind of doing that and focusing on that. And uh, you know I'm I'm focusing on me. And I think if I do go back on the road again anytime soon or in the near future, um, yeah, it would probably end up just being, you know, sh- shows with uh, me as the headliner. Okay. So, you know, you you know, you know, got this possible tour coming in February, and you got this album you're working on and whatnot. Is there anything else you've been looking forward, you know, to do or working on in the future? I would love to get overseas. Uh, I've been trying to work that out with, even with Boondocks, if it's with him, without him, uh, hopefully with him, would be dope, you know, but uh, to get over to the UK, uh, Europe, kind of just stretch our legs a little more and see how far we can really go. Um, I've been, I've been in probably, uh, not probably, I know every single lower 48 state, east coast to west coast, at least two or three times. Uh, over the course of the years of touring. So I've seen it. I want to say I've seen it all. I've done it all. I definitely have not done it all. I've seen quite a bit, but uh, I want to see more, you know, and I, I want to go. I'd love to see Europe. I'd love to go to Canada. Um, that's as far as traveling goes. Uh, as far as other things for the future, projects, um, you know, you never know. You never know this whole game, uh, this, the whole game and the underground and the things that we're doing. Uh, the whole rap game is it, it's really a lot about networking and who you meet and who you know. And sometimes that comes later down the line. And sometimes things change along the way. You know, you might have plans to do something and you're dead set on it. And something else comes up and it's just that it's just make, it just makes a better deal to step up type thing. So you know, you just again, you never know. As of right now, I just try to keep my plans as uh, short term as possible and stick to the uh, stick to the uh, long ones, the long term when I do have them. Great. So you know, you stated earlier in the interview that you do like local stuff with like bands or just go so and so. Did you have any you know maybe thoughts of putting out an album of a band type style or did you just you know, going to continue doing the whole rap thing or anything in that nature? Well, the, the stuff that I do locally, just here in Milwaukee, uh, cover band that I'm involved with, uh, you know, we do the festivals, we do that kind of stuff. Um, I do sound, uh, run the soundboard for a couple of other guys. Uh, I do have another project, um, which will remain unnamed right now. You know, I've secured the websites, and uh, it's more or less, 
it would be a whole nother project of me, but it's a lot more me, a lot more personal, uh, using my real name type shit. Um, more or less music that doesn't really fit into anything else that I'm doing uh, is another project I'm doing on the side. You know, more uh, music, music I guess you'd more likely hear on the radio, I'd like to say, but at the same time, I, I hate the radio, so I don't like saying it like that. But, you know, it's uh, it might not be as hard as, as horrorcore, and it might not be as, you know, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean, it just, other, it, it just, it's kind of the on the side. It's, I don't like to get rid of music. I don't like to toss it away. I don't like to say, okay, I'm not going to use that. Just forget about it. I like to put it into somewhere else. So there's an idea on the side that I'm working on too that you know might be that. But again, you never know. <laughs> right, right. So you know, with you know, you're doing your own thing and whatnot. Have you ever been in talks, you know, with any labels in particular and you know, do stuff with them, or did you just plan on just doing your own solo thing and just hope you get reached out or whatnot? I never, to be honest, I never really planned on doing anything solo. Um, it was more or less, it was more on me. Like, I didn't, I didn't think I was good enough to be able to do solo. Like, I was just like, nah, you know, I'm, I've been in the background. I'm a hype man of Boondocks. I'm more of a singer than a rapper. But, <laughs> excuse me, um, through, you know, a lot of close people and uh, close friends and stuff like that, they gave, me the, they gave me the backing and the confidence to be able to go out there and do that. Um, I was actually approached by a label in Milwaukee. Um, they came to me and they said, hey, are you, in, you know, if you want to do solo, we got you. You should definitely do an EP. We can get you some tours and this and that. And that's what gave me the first jump start to do anything by myself and um, you know unfortunately it didn't work out with that label uh, I was only with them for a couple of months and uh, since then everything we've been doing is independent um, I, I have a great management team uh, Lisbeth Entertainment uh, Mark my manager like everybody the team of people that I have surrounding me that uh, help me out and with you know all the things that go into this business to get shows to get studio time to get merchandise. I mean, it's it's a lot. And uh, thank God I have these guys, you know, that that's they help a lot too. So, I, again, I never really planned on doing anything solo, and when I did, uh, it, I got an amazing response. And to this day, I'm still getting an amazing response. So, of course, I'm going to keep doing it, you know, because well, I, I believe in it, and apparently a lot of other people do too. Right. So then, you know, basically you're just going to continue doing your own thing and doing your whole independent role down there and not really looking forward to getting with any, you know, labels or anything in particular. Um, no, you know, I, I, I don't. I think that I've, we've proven ourselves. We, we've proven to ourselves that we can do it ourselves, you know. It's not always all about a record label. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of people don't understand. If you're not in this business like we are and you don't do what we do, a lot of people don't understand. You know, it's a record label doesn't make you. A record label doesn't um, make you successful. You know, the, the best a record label can do is business. And their job, their business, their way of making money is making money off of you as the artist. But as the artist, you have your job to do, which is, Make good music, period. You know, make, continually make good music, continually want to improve that down the line. You know, a lot of, a lot of juggalos and a lot of people got upset when Boondocks left Psychopathic. You know, when he left the label. What a lot of people don't understand is there's a lot of politics to that. You know, it's not about, you know, Boondocks, dirty, turncoat dirty, David Huddle, he will always be a juggalo who will always have love for the juggalos. I've never heard him, I've never heard him say anything different than that, you know, and the only reason for him to leave psychopathic and do essentially the same thing I'm doing right now, independent and doing it ourselves is strictly because of business. It's politics, it's behind the scenes shit, it's it's you know money, it's monetary stuff, it's 
it's business. It's stuff that doesn't need to be public, you know. So, again, you know, when it comes to a label, there's a lot. There's a lot of politics. To it. There's a lot of business to it. Um, and again, I think we've proven ourselves that we can proven to ourselves rather that we can do it independently and don't really need a label to start with the business end of it. But you know, we we can just do ourselves. If you know, but you know, if, if I, I guess if a bigger label, a bigger label, you know, I'm not going to say that if somebody like Strange Music or Southern Ones or something like that or anybody, you know, psychopathic, anybody came to me and said, hey, you know, we want to help you out. I'm not going to say I'm not going to sit down and listen to them, but at the same time, I, I just kind of one of those things. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If I can do it myself, maybe I should. Right, right. Well. Uh, by the looks of it, you know, we got uh, just a few minutes here. Is there anything else, you know, you'd like to tell us that you haven't stated yet or anything? Um, well, no, I'm just, uh, you know, we got a couple of, I got a contest going on right now uh, for Halloween. Uh, the details are on CousinCletus.com. Um, chance to win some merch. Uh, yeah, and while you're on CousinCletus.com, if you go on the web store, there's a whole bunch of, uh, sales going on right now. It's basically a blow-up sale of all stuff we have left over from 200 plus a bunch of other new stuff like charms, shirts, bandanas, all that goodness. And, uh, yeah, I don't know to anybody that's out there listening, all the fans, uh, I'm still really overwhelmed by the amount of love that I've been getting and uh, the feedback I'm getting and just everything, the pictures, the letters. The, it's It's been insane, so thank you to everybody and just, uh, I'm I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to take a little time to get this album done and just keep your eyes and ears open uh, early next year and should see some big things coming. Right, right. Um, also, is there any, you know, shout-outs you'd like to make real quick? Well, uh, of course, you, Robbie. Thank you for having me on. And, uh, Anytime. Doing this. Uh, of course, everybody at Liz Entertainment, uh, my manager, Joe and Mark, you know, they're, they're the shit. Uh, uh, Abel from 1031, he's a new guy that just came on the Libs Entertainment. Um, yeah, if anybody, uh, if you're looking for collabs, if you're looking for, uh, you know, if you're looking for me to get on a verse or anything like that, you can hit up my manager, Mark, at LibsEntertainment.com. Uh, any questions, anybody, prom- any promoters out there that might be interested in getting me to come to your city, if anybody wants you. You know, get with your promoters if you want me to come to your city. Let them know you want me to come and just get with anybody that lives in and uh, we'll make it happen. All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, you know, it was, you know, nice to get you on. I know I've been trying months and months and you've been busy and stuff touring and whatnot, you know. It was cool to get you on. So, uh, you know, it was an honor and uh, hopefully get you on again sometime soon, maybe in the future somewhere as close to your album release or something. For sure, man. I'll definitely uh, keep you on the list when the time comes. I for sure, man. Uh, it was nice getting you on and talking to you and doing this interview, and I'll get you off here, and you can continue. For sure. Much love, old man. I appreciate it. All right. Much love, man. All right. Peace. All right, Joe, that was uh, Cousin Cletus. You know, he just, um, you know, informed you on a new album he's slowly working on and hoping for an early February 2013 release. And, you know, uh, he introduced, you know, a contest on CousinCletus.com, search area, you go there. And, uh, you know, we got some uh, other dope interviews coming up in the next few weeks, you know, with people like Liquid Assassin and Bizarre. Cut Cologne and guys like them. So, you know, be on the lookout, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Check out the site too. And, uh, you know, just be on the lookout. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in. And we'll be looking forward to, you know, doing other interviews soon. And also, if you have any requests of any spe- any uh, specific artists you want, can't get at me on Twitter or Facebook, you know, inform me. And, you know, I'll contact my booker and let them know and whatnot. But thanks for tuning in and about to check out. So much love to everyone and have a good night. Later.